Hi and hello everyone. What we have seen in the previous two lecture was general queuing models. Now, what we see next uh, is what are what are called as queues with vacations. And uh, what is this? This is not in I mean uh, in any way a special case of GG1 models, but it is more uh, we are going to look at the Marco or semi Marco setup only. Okay. Since this is also queues with vacation is also a broad class of models which like the impatience uh, behavior or like the retrial behavior is also a very important class. Uh, but we will use both MM1 and MG1 together when we want to analyze this. We are not going to look at in the GG1 setup. So, in that way, this is more of uh, falls into the category of semi Markovian queues, one can say. Okay. But what is this queues with vacations? Okay. This vacation is a very generic word which we use in queuing theory to denote different kind of things. It could be really you know a server could be failure or it requires some setup time or it is really like for some reason or other whenever the server is unavailable to the customers over certain duration due to maintenance, failure, setting up of the server or whatever be the reason those uh, periods are what is we call it as vacations in generic term. Okay. So, the specifically the periods for which the server is unavailable due to whatever reason it may be, they are all called server vacation periods. Okay. And as you would expect for many situations like you know this uh, is a you know usual occurrence that you know you would find. For example, uh, if you are going through a traffic junction, if there is no traffic uh, regulate or traffic police there, of course, there is no traffic light suppose. If there is not there, then that is you know you can think of it as if that is unavailability of the server there. The server there is the traffic police you know who is regulating the traffic in the particular junction. So, that is also a vacation. right? So, like this you can find this notion of a generic term vacation in many production system, communication system, computer systems and one of the most fertile ground for such models is your wireless network uh, that you have various studies that one do which all involves this kind of vacations. Okay. Or Nowadays, like you know, in this era of energy efficient mechanisms being put in networks, right? So, if uh, you know, for example, in military applications and elsewhere, where you know you deploy certain devices and to can preserve power, you know, it will, it will switch off or it will work at a very minimal uh, energy consumption rate. It will work. So, those kind of things when you want to model you really basically if it switches off, switches off it becomes vacation and if it is work at the you know reduced power okay, then it is a variation of this vacation which is called working vacation and like that you know one can model it in situations. Okay. So, for example, here you know we are just given two simple examples which normally you would find. For example, machines producing certain items may need some periodic checking and maintenance. Okay. So, at those points there may be customers who need to be served, but the machine due to its uh, you know, maintenance activity is unavailable to produce anything or to attend to the required requirement of uh, you know, service requirement from the customers. So, the periods of random lens of preventive maintenance, this is what is called as the period of server vacation. Server is unavailable here. Similarly, in a computer and communication system, besides uh, being engaged in primary functions such as receiving, processing or transmitting data either in a system or over a network, if it has to undertake secondary work such as preventive maintenance or you know has to scan for new work or anything other than that if you do. right? So, this is all will fall under the broad framework of vacations and uh, Tian and Zhang 
uh, is one of the you know recent uh, book uh, rather monograph which gives lots of ideas about this. So, this is the title itself called Vacation Queuing Models Theory and Applications. Another good reference uh, is basically the little earlier one which is Takagi 1991 is what then one, one can refer to for various kinds of vacation queuing models where it arises and what are their applications and so on. Okay. So, that is what we are going to consider. Now, there are many variations of queues with vacations. Now, when it happens, each time when a busy period ends and the systems becomes empty, the server starts vacation for a random amount of time duration. Okay. So, that is what you know you normally consider as vacation. I mean there is no more customer to serve. At, at that point of time, the server decides to take a vacation. Right? Now, when he returns from vacation and if he finds one or more customers are waiting, then he comes back to the normal mode and he starts serving the customers until the system becomes empty again. This is called as an exhaustive service discipline. Right? While the server is working, the queue behaves like a normal queue, right? Only when he is in on, the server is on vacation, uh, you know, when the customer arrives to an empty system, you know, service will not start because server is in some sleeping mode. Okay, you can think of vacation or in sleeping mode or in downtime, right? It's not in up condition; it's in down condition for whatever reason. That's what it is, right? But once he finds on his return from vacation, one or more customers, he will start serving the customers, then it becomes like a normal queue. And if that service continues until it becomes empty, then that is what is called exhaustive service discipline. If on return from a vacation, right, because normal period is what now we will refer to as busy period, uh, the server finds no customer waiting, then he waits for the arrival of a customer. Okay. This is called a single vacation system means he will go for only one vacation and he will come back. On his return if he finds that there is at least one customer waiting then he will switch to serving the customer. If not he will wait for the customer to arrival much like the normal queue. So, this is a single vacation system okay, which is denoted by V suffix s yes to denote uh, the single vacation case. On the other hand when he returns back from vacation, if he finds that no customer is waiting, then he go, he'll go for another vacation. Okay. Again, on his return, if he finds at least one customer, he will start serving. If it is not, then he'll go for another vacation. So he will keep on taking vacation until on his return he finds at least one customer uh, waiting uh, whenever uh, on his return from a vacation, on any return, right? So, this is called as multiple vacation system and we denote it by Vm, Vm, V suffix m, we denote it as multiple vacation and Vs is single, the s is single, m is multiple this is what the notation that we will use it just to refer to this. Okay. So, there are two scenarios that you could have, you could have multiple vacation and single vacation. Now, there are many, many other models possible. For example, the server goes on vacation. Okay. Uh, and once he becomes empty and then he comes back, he sees that you know some one customer, two customer is waiting, he does not start service. He goes for another vacation or he will wait whichever way it is multiple or single vacation period, but he will not start the service until there are n number of customers are waiting in this case. So, this is referred to as n policy. Uh, like this, you know, one could have different variations and there are plenty of them okay depending upon the requirement at need you can explore it further okay now vacations with exhaustive service is what we will be considering meaning that whatever we have mentioned here that once he starts serve uh, serving the customers he will serve until the systems become empty that is what is the case and in that case if vn in, the, in, the, in single vacation, it is a single random variable because after a duration of a random amount of time, he will come back to 
normal period which is and then he will wait for the customer or he will start serving depending upon whether the custom there are no customer or there were at least one customer waiting in the queue. Now, in case of multiple vacation, we can denote the nth vacation by the random variable v n and we will assume that this v n are a sequence of i a d random variable which is independent of the service time and the sequence v n of the random variables may be independent of the arrival period or it may be dependent on the arrival process. It may be dependent or independent of the arrival process, but we will always assume that this is independent of the service process. Okay. Let us call this f v to be the c d f of this random variable v n and f v star is the Laplace TLG transform of this random variable. Now, if you consider a standard g g 1 q with the inter arrival time as a with uh, its mean as 1 by lambda and variance as sigma a square and the service time s with a mean of uh, 1 by mu and the variance of sigma b square then we shall denote a q with general inter arrival and service times and with single vacation by this notation g g 1 with an iphone v s this is, these are all not standard notations but you know we will use this okay and the corresponding q with multiple vacation by g g 1 you know you do not need this g i because we are not really using this uh, g i. So, you can re remove this. So, it is a g g 1 v m and uh, also one more thing that you can notice the inter arrival time here we are calling it is by a. So, which was uh, equal to t in the case of g g 1 that we have used it here. Okay. So, this is uh, you can you have to you can remember that okay, that is what it is a here does it matter it is just uh, we are defining what it is in, in the in the particular context okay. and the corresponding multiple uh, vacation case is what we call it a g g 1 hyphen v m and here we consider only vacation queues with exhaustive service. Okay. But then as against this exhaustive service discipline there could be situations uh, which gives rise to a different varieties of non exhaustive service discipline okay, under which the server vacation may start even when some customers are present in the system okay, right or you know he will not uh, uh, you know start service and so on. So, that means two cases again there is a preemptive and non preemptive one can introduce where vacations may preempt an ongoing service for example, in the case of breakdown of the service mechanism right. When service is going on for certain customer suddenly the server breaks down. Non preemptive case may uh, in this case what where the vacations may commence only at epochs of service completion or vacation termination uh, in the case of a scheduled maintenance. Right. So, when the vacation starts it whether it preempts any ongoing service or without any preempting the ongoing service because the server can take vacation while there are customers waiting meaning that when there is even even when the service is going on he can take vacation. So, whether that vacation is a preemptive one or non preemptive one meaning that whether it is preempting the ongoing service of the customer or not is the question here. Okay. If it is a scheduled maintenance, obviously you would wait, right, for a service completion to happen, right. But if it is a failure, sudden failure, then you will not be able to control whether the what will happen to the current service. So you could have these two cases. There are very different kind of specific non-exhaustive service, such as gated service. What is that? is also prevalent in uh, communication network or computer network areas. Uh, you know server takes a vacation, he comes back from vacation, what he will do is that he will close the gate at that point of time and whatever the number of customers who are available at that point of time when the server returns from vacation, he will serve only that many customers before he takes another vacation. It is called gated service you know you just put a gate and then you serve these customers and then leave and different kinds of limited service right you know I can assume that you know a server takes a vacation after serving say one customer right 
maybe like some brief it is some kind of refueling or something is required now you after serving one customer you will take a vacation so to you know replenish or refill whatever item that is required before you start serving the other customer so that's a kind of a limited service decrementing service right once he comes back you know it will be at the full capacity and then it might be lower or you know whatever is the case there could be different variation that one can think in these cases even within the non exhaustive service cases which are all of them are important from their own perspective from their own applications point of view okay there are even beyond this exhaustive non exhaustive even with the exhaustive then you could have other like now recent phenomena is whatever i which is mentioned as working vacation queue one important property that you would observe when you are dealing with such uh, vacation queues is what a specific stochastic decomposition property okay so this is uh, for the vacation queues this is an important property stochastic decomposition because you always look for such kind of decomposition in such models and what is that under certain conditions on this vacation sequence vn is what the vacation duration periods both for the you know single vacation or multiple vacation models the steady state waiting time is the sum of two independent random variables the steady state waiting time can be written as a sum of two independent random variables one is the waiting time of in the same gg1q but without vacation and the other is a random variable that is related to this vacation sequence vacation duration sequence okay so this is what is the decomposition so the steady state waiting time is a sum of two random variables one is the usual gg1 model without vacation the other quantity is then the quantity that is related to the vacation sequence now like when this has this then one need not worry about only this second part alone you need to worry because the first part comes from the analysis of the the corresponding uh, model but without vacation whatever be whether it is mm1 mg1 gm1 whichever model you take it or gg1 in general we will say the the corresponding model without vacation plus this the uh, the quantity that is related to the vacation duration now if the queues are having poisson input then such a decomposition property holds for the queue length distribution as well not just for the waiting time waiting time it holds in that generality gg1 but for queue length right but for queue length it is you need poisson input case in that case even for queue length also you have this decomposition property that one is the it can be written as the sum of two random variables independent random variables one is the q length of the corresponding model but without vacation the other one is connected to the vacation sequence okay so because of this kind of stuff that we want us to say like we are studying this actually after our gg1 model though the models that we consider will not consider under gg1 case okay fine so this is an important property you always look for in any vacation queuing model such a stochastic uh, decomposition property okay now let us consider as the first model an mm1 queue with vacations right so this is we could have done along with the markovian queue but we are doing it for the reasons which we have already said okay what we have now scenario you have a usual mm1 queuing system with usual notation and the stability condition rho which is lambda by mu less than 1 in addition what we have the server vacation is what we are introducing the server goes on vacation for an exponentially distributed duration with rate lambda with rate theta now this is happens as soon as and only when the queue becomes empty so that means in the exhaustive case we said already said that we are looking at only the exhaustive service uh, discipline case is what we are considering so the server goes on vacation for an exponential duration with rate theta as soon as and only when the queue becomes empty which is the exhaustive case now on return from vacation the server will go for another vacation or possibly more vacation if required if the system was empty on return from a vacation that means that what we have a multiple vacations case so this is basically mm1 hyphen 
vm model so basically we have here mm1 vm is the model that we have here right in that notation that we have just introduced here okay now this is what the model that we are considering now as you see this model can also be thought about as a model connected with setup in the in a machine uh, production system context okay so that is what we are saying this multiple vacation mm1 model can also be thought about as an mm1 model with a setup time that is a machine with setup how as soon as you know the server becomes free or the machine becomes free of any uh, customer in this case jobs then the machine is switched off that is what we call the server is deactivated as soon as the queue becomes empty. Now when the new customer arrives at an empty system now a setup process is need to be initiated which uh, you know starts the server and it takes an exponential uh, amount of time with rate theta is what. So, this model is exactly same as the model for this situation. Now, this is where this n policy business might come here because you do not want to start as soon as one customer comes right. You want to wait because there is a setup cost and setup duration and so on. So, you would want to wait till certain number of customers accumulate and then start the machine that is a normal thing to do in such situations. So, that is what you know this situation is. So, n policy is just extension in this context one can make it. But here as soon as the one customer comes the setting up of server starts and it takes an exponential amount of time with parameter theta and after that the server starts serving the customer again. This is same as an mm1 working vac uh, multiple vacation uh, concept right this model is what is here. Okay. Now, we will assume that inter arrival times, service times, vacation times or setup times whichever it is they are all mutually independent. So, usual MM1 we have introduced a multiple vacation idea here that is what we have here right. Now, this model can be represented as a continuous time Markov chain as you know by now where the state of the system at time t is characterized by this two dimensional quantity i j and j of t where i and j denote the number of customers in the system and j denotes the state of the server 0 means server is in vacation 1 means the server is in busy period meaning it is in working condition or normal period. Okay. Now, it is clear that the state space of the two dimensional CTMC is there is a 0 which we still retain it as 0 0 for reason which we will say later. So, there is a G empty system along with i and j where i is there is at least one customer and the system state is 0 and 1 depending upon whether server is in vacation or in busy period where i 0 indicates as we just said the server is in vacation period and there are i customers in the system. i 1 server is in busy period at the normal period and there are i customers in, uh, in there. And p i j denote the steady state uh, probability of the system being in state i j is what this steady state probability is. Now, let us look at how we can model this uh, by a CTMC and what are the state transition diagrams right. When the system is empty right the server is in vacation right arrival can happen to make the system becomes 1 0 right. Now, from 1 0 again arrival can happen to make this system to move to 2 0 and so on any number of arrivals can happen with rate lambda. So, the system may move along this line. Okay. Now, if it is in 0 with 0 0 meaning system is server is on vacation when he comes back and sees that system is in 0 he goes for another vacation. So, he continues on vacation right. So, in this particular case when the system is in 0 vacation never ends right. When there is at least one customer when the vacation ends that means with rate theta right the system I mean on an arrival from vacation if you find the system is at least 1 then the vacation will end and the system will move to the busy period or the normal period. So, that means the server will become now the, the j the second quantity will become 1 with the corresponding customer remaining as 1. 
So, with rate theta this will move from 1 0 to 1 1 and same thing will happen with 2 0 to 2 1 or n, n 0 to n 1 right. It is here and then you will see that uh, this uh, vacation ends here then it will move to n 1 and then server starts the normal period which means he starts serving the customer again ok. Now, while customer is getting served for example, if there is 1 1 which means there is one customer the server is in serving the customer. Now, there could be an arrival to make it to 2 1 or there could be a service completion with rate mu and then it will then boils down to 0 0 then the server will go on vacation then, then the other process will start. Now, if it goes to 2 1 right then if there is a service completion it will go to 1 1 or if there is an arrival it will go to 3 1 right it will go along this line uh, this upper line uh, when you have server is the normal period with arrivals and departures uh, happening in the usual way like an mm1 right so this zero if i plug it here this you know there is one lambda and mu tag, tag if i take and if i remove all these things then what is you are going to get is the normal mm1 now you have segregated this particular state. So, both of this probabilities represents the number in the system being the same right whether this is basically yeah, this n 1 and n 0 the sum of these two would represent the number in the system being n right that is what you know we have done here in this case. So, this is what is the state transition diagram in the case of mm 1 q with multiple vacations ok. Now, if I write the stochastic flow balance equation for this particular state I will have 1 which is this quantity right lambda p 0 0 equals mu p 1 1 and for p 1 1 you will have lambda plus mu p 1 1 right and theta p p 1 0 and mu p 2 1 is what then you will get here right. So, this is what you have for p 1 1. Now, for p i 0 from 1 to this you will all have this equation because this will be lambda plus theta times p i 0 right and uh, you will have this lambda times p i minus 1 0 this is what you will have for i 0 and for i 1 suppose if I take here right it is lambda plus mu times uh, i 1 lambda times i minus 1 1 mu times i plus 1 1 and theta times i 0 is what then you will get these three terms. So, this is what is the steady state balance equations. Now, you can solve this ok. Again it is two dimensional solving will be little, little difficult, but it is solvable one can obtain this uh, like what we have done for retrial q and so on in a similar fashion one can do this ok. But what we will try to do is that we will try to solve this balance equation by this method what is called as matrix geometric method it is just to illustrate how this method works you know in the generic problem and how why this is so powerful tool to solve such uh, processes ok. We will try to get the essence of this approach through uh, applying this this to we could have applied this to say for example in our retail model case and elsewhere too but we'll try to here here okay now to apply to apply this of course it's uh, it's basically the qbd model and so on what one calls it you see that suppose if i call this as level this whole thing this n denotes the level whatever be the number of states here so this is what we call it level then you see that from n 1 from the level n the transitions happen to n minus 1 or n plus 1 no matter whether it is n 0 or n 1 in both the states ok. So, that is what is makes our life easier right that is what we are observing. So, that makes it that the last two equations for i greater than or equal to 2 if I combine right if I consider this p i 0 and p i 1 that corresponds to this is a vector p i now, but this p vector p i is correspond to number in the system being i right, but this is a vector you know this p i is it is not a you know, scalar quantity it is a vector quantity you should remember. Now, by combining these two equation which meaning the combining the equation corresponding to these two you can write this in this form ok, where just that you know you are just combining these two equations you just write it for i 0 i 1 right 
in the matrix form two equations you will have for i greater than or equal to 2 i greater than or equal to 2 you take from these two sets and then write down this is what you will get here where my a naught is this a 1 is this and a 2 is this right because from i plus 1 a 2 and i is connected with a 1 i minus 1 is a naught is what then you will get here that means this is corresponding to the arrival part this is corresponding to the service completion part this is corresponding to the movement bit within the level right within the level this is to the lower level this is to the neck higher level is what then these things will come here because this matrix equation is what you will get so this is the vector matrix equation in this case right in matrix geometric method any such equation is what you are trying to get you know you are trying to put it in such a form where now you can look at the similarity of this equation with an mm1 system right in mm1 system assume that suppose if this were scalars you had you know p i minus 1 and p a and p i plus 1 is what was related but in a scalar fashion but here in the vector fashion or matrix notation right with this coefficient of matrix and these as vectors you know this relationship is true this is what is the similarity that when you make use of it when you are trying to use this matrix geometric method geometric method or geometric probable distribution is what you know you would obtain in mm1 case so this is matrix version of that is what you are looking at here in a in a way so this is what is the equation now we will first simplify this vector matrix equation by eliminating say p i plus 1 from here how do we do by equating the flow from level i to level i plus 1 and the flow from level i plus 1 to i with the flow balance what one can observe is that this is what one can observe p i 0 p i 1 times lambda would be equal to p i plus 1 times 1 times mu is what then you will get okay by equating the flow between these two cases okay i to i plus 1 and i plus 1 to i is what then you are you are equating then you will get this equation this one right p i 0 p i 1 is what we are if you put it in a vector form uh, then this is what you call p i so using that i can write this as p i times a 3 left hand side the right side is p i plus 1 a 2 because this is what is the term that you would be having here where a 3 is 0 0 lambda lambda is the matrix so what you have observed is that this quantity which is basically comes from this factor right that is basically this factor this gives you rise this and this one is equal to p i of a 3 where a 3 is this quantity now if i substitute that in place of uh, p i plus 1 a 2 this p i a 3 then I will get p i minus 1 a naught plus p i times a 1 plus a 3 equal to 0 for i greater than or equal to 2 or you can write p i as minus times p i minus 1 times a naught into a 1 plus a 3 inverse or you can say something like p i minus 1 times some r some matrix r where r is exactly this matrix which is turning out to be in this particular case is the matrix given by this expression because one can compute what is a1 a3 a naught everything you know you can compute this r this is what it is okay now what you are having pi is pi minus 1 times r which is equal to pi minus 2 times r square because pi minus 1 again it i can write it in the same way as p i minus 2 times r so in total it is p i minus 1 times r square for p i so in general if you iterate you it will lead to p i equal to some p 1 times r to the power i minus 1 for all i greater than or equal to 1 now you can make a similarity with mm1 mm1 also you had some p naught times rho to the power r or rho to the power i is what you got it as for p i so it is in matrix geometric the main point or the main crux the essence is that to up get this matrix r such that this kind of expression remember this pi p1 they are all vectors right so in when this vectors but corresponding to the same level right so 
this vector in, in vector form this will resemble a geometric uh, kind of form is what then you look for in matrix geometric case. Now, once I have this one all p i expressed in terms of p 1. Now, you still have these two equations only we use that two from i c k t one equal to 2. So, now you have one equation here one, one and another one. So, there are three equations here and the normalization conditions all of this can be used to determine this p 0 0 and p 1 p 1 has now two elements right. So, these three equations along with that normalization condition which means one of the equation you can throw use the normalization condition to determine these three quantities you can do ok. So, the normalization condition now if I write it, it is basically sum of p i j where i and j which is basically p 0 0 plus whatever is the p 1 terms which will sum to be equal to this quantity is what you would observe here. So, this is what is equal to 1. So, this is the normalization condition that you would obtain and where E is as usual the column vector of 1s. So, this is what is the normalization condition you will use it ok. Now, once once you get this then you can obtain L which is basically I times P i time uh, P i is a vector here E is vector of 1 which means basically you are summing these two elements multiplying by I is what will give you the number which is basically it is equal to this quantity because P i you know it is P 1 times R to the power i minus 1 which is basically turning out to be this quantity. Now, I minus R to the power minus 2 or the inverse you are squaring it multiplying by this vector and multiply by this vector is what you will get this L and from Mittel's law you will obtain W to be equal to L by lambda ok. This is what is the essence of metric geometry in this way you can solve this system directly also after a lengthy process you can also solve there is no problem with that you can use operator method or generative function method you will be able to solve this model as well. Now, this is after obtaining this, but from the mean value arguments and using pasta property and Littles law, we can obtain W directly as this. Just to exhibit certain things, you know, we just wrote this. What is that? You look at the waiting time in the system is basically the waiting time in the system, right, uh, in a normal mm one q plus the waiting time which is connected with the vacation uh, random variables. So, it turns out that in this particular case that the extra delay that you have in this mm1 with vacation model is basically the extra delay is again an exponential distribution with parameter theta. We just that stochastic decomposition that is the normal without vacation plus the extra one which is connected with the vacation and in this particular case it turns out that you know it is exactly the so, expectation is simply sum of these two quantities. So, that is what is the case, but even the distribution itself will turn out to be exponential only in this particular case ok. So, this is what is the mm1 model with uh, uh, multiple vacations. Now, this model can be analyzed with single vacation as well. So, what one has to do you have to make a slight change to the model setup. The server after returning from a single vacation either starts service if the system is non empty at the point of time or waits for a customer to arrive like in the normal queue. So, what one has to do is that one more state for example, here what would happen here right. Now, here there is no point in multiple vacation case vacation will not end while the system is empty because whenever on return from a vacation if the server finds the system empty he will take another vacation. Right, but in the case of single vacation case, like he can, he will end his vacation and bring down to the normal mode. So there will be another state, right? Zero one is what then you would introduce here, and there will be a moment theta here, and from here there is a lambda here. The, it will come here. These are the only two extra links that you need to add to this diagram to get a model which is an mm1 with single vacation and one can also analyze along similar vacation and that is the reason why we did not call this as simply as 0, 0, 0 we kept it because in single vacation case we could have add another state which is 0, 1. In that case vacation will end while the system is in empty and the arrival can happen that is only two links that you need to which means that there will be a curve here and then there is an arrival. So, this is what would be the structure that you will have with appropriate rates. Then you will get a system of equations and then you will try to solve for the case of 
this mm1q single vacation it's you know a similar way so one need not do that is what the need so this is what we do for the mm1 with vacations in this particular case so what we have seen is a you know how does you know the vacation comes and when in uh, this vacation is introduced in a simple mm1 model uh, how one can analyze and we have also given the essence of what is a matrix geometric approach one can adopt to solve such problems when you have uh, this kind of multi dimensional situations when clubbing you know one basically you are condensing one dimension to make it look like a single dimension but now not in a scalar terms but in vector terms that's what is will gives rise to applicability of matrix geometry which is a very powerful tool which the essence you can see it from this analysis okay so we will stop here we will continue in the next lecture thank you bye